Well, we're at the Michigan Iron Industry Museum, and this is the solar compass uh, patented in 1836 by William Austin Burt, who was a deputy land surveyor for the federal government and was subdividing the uh, land north of Milwaukee near the Baraboo Range. And uh, he could not close his survey. He could not come back to the point of beginning and end up precisely on that point. He thought that the problem was that uh, his chainmen were not doing an accurate job of measuring. Uh, it then dawned on him that it was could be local magnetic attraction. And so how could you then come up with a system of surveying that didn't depend upon the magnetic compass, the simple magnetic compass that had been used for well over a hundred years by federal land surveyors. And uh, uh, he was a practical uh, astronomer, uh, self-taught, but he came up with the idea of the solar compass. And uh, as I say, he patented the thing in 1836, and he brought the Federal Survey from the Lower Peninsula to the Upper Peninsula in May of 1840. And by 1844, he was in the area of Marquette County. He was actually surveying a line south from Teal Lake, which was the township line between Range 26 West and Range 27 West. And uh, they were running south, and the uh, compass, uh, which was part of the solar compass, uh, was actually pointing south. The north end of the needle was pointing in a southerly direction. The iron formation is naturally magnetic. The, if there's magnetite present, it will throw a compass off. And so he was moving from what we call the foot wall uh, of the iron formation across the iron formation. And uh, normally speaking, the magnetic compass, the north end of the needle points north. It just so happens that in this area, uh, we call it the isogonic lines, uh, are just about zero. That is, uh, magnetic north and true north are almost the same. And so as, he, uh, as his party was moving south, uh, surveying this line between range 26 west and 27 west, William Austin Burt said to his crew, look around, boys, and see what you could find. And they found pieces of high-grade iron ore, which was unknown at that time, to exist in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Uh, a magnetic compass would have been useless in that area. And it was only with the solar compass that he could maintain a true north-south orientation. Uh, they brought samples of the uh, iron ore back to Lansing and reported to the state geologist, Dr. Douglas Houghton, uh, what they had found. He said uh, later that day, how would they have surveyed this land without my solar compass? Amazing situation, as though Providence was making ready uh, for the survey here on the Iron Ranges. This discovery uh, in Nagani was the first in the Lake Superior region, uh, first in Michigan, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Western Ontario. Uh, so it was a remarkable thing and the association that we have of the solar compass with the discovery of iron ore uh, just fits together in a wonderful picture here. Okay. His job was to do the survey. He wasn't there to find mines, and uh, he himself never profited from uh, this discovery. Bert, why was the solar compass so important? Well, um, we do know on the Masaba Range in Minnesota, where they were not using the solar compass, the, each of the sections of land, which is one square mile, looked like somebody sat on the apple crate and, and pushed it like that. Uh, lines, property lines, don't run north and south. They run northeast, southwest, and so on. And uh, that's the result when you're not using a solar compass. If you're depending entirely on a magnetic compass, you're not going to get an accurate layout of, of the lands. And what he was doing in 1844 was surveying the townships, that is, a unit of 36 square miles. And uh, later on then, several years later, they came back and surveyed the interior, actually laid out the, the square miles 
the sections there within the township. And if the township line itself had not been accurately laid out, then the sections within the township would not be accurate. Uh, well, you try and get as close as you can uh, to 5,280 feet to, the, to a square mile, and uh, the uh, objective there is to come as close to having perfect square miles as you can. What is it uh, about the solar compass that fascinates you? <laughs> well, is it the inventor? Yes, uh, he, um, he was known to have a penchant for accuracy, and he wanted the lands that he surveyed uh, to be accurate as they were intended to be. Uh, we do know that in Michigan there were a number of fraudulent surveys of, uh, of deputy land surveyors that just were there for the pay and not for the quality of their work. But William Austin Burt and his four sons, each of whom were surveyors also in time, uh, all were, their hallmark was accuracy. And when you take a fellow uh, that didn't graduate from high school, that was self-taught in effect in astronomy and mathematics, who invented this device, uh, it was close to genius. And uh, the fascination is that this fellow who didn't have a high school or college education uh, was able to uh, devise this system that would lead to accurate surveying. And of course, the one condition is you have to have sunlight. Did Bert fully recognize yes. what he had discovered in terms of iron ore? Yes, he, uh, he later wrote uh, that winter when he went to write up his, uh, the results of his survey uh, he indicated that uh, this could be a major source of iron ore, the Marquette Range. And prior to that, where was it coming from? Uh, most of the ores were being mined in Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey. And were they of comparable quality? Some were, but quite a few were not. And there were, uh, they were also mining bog iron ore found in swamps, and where we shoot for something like 60 percent iron in our ore, those ores ran 20 to 30 percent. Okay, describe again the discovery of iron ore by William Austin Burt. In surveying, running a, a line that was to the south, uh, he found that the magnetic needle was pointing, the north end of the needle was pointing south, and hence without the solar compass to provide the true north-south orientation, uh, they couldn't have completed that survey. Uh, just using the magnetic compass because it was useless. It, uh, it couldn't tell anything. And you can only prolong a cut line through the woods uh, a short distance and still maintain the orientation of that line. And so the, the uh, men that looked for the cause of this magnetic fluctuation found the pieces of iron ore, and uh, which at that time it was unknown that there was any iron formation or any iron ore in this area. The uh, Indians who had told the, the French uh, missionaries and fur traders about copper did not tell them about iron ore. If you look in the uh, uh, Relation of the Jesuits, uh, they mention copper a number of times, but they don't mention iron ore. So this was a, an asset that was unknown when uh, Michigan acquired the Upper Peninsula in exchange for Toledo. Bert, could you describe the actual operation of the solar compass? Uh, Bert's solar compass is made up of several important components. Uh, the first here is the adjustment for the latitude. Uh, we're here uh, at 46 degrees 31 minutes north of the equator, and uh, th this adjustment is made here uh, the angle of the sun uh, varies. Uh, today happens to be the first day of fall, uh, and so the declination is just about zero. But that can be adjusted here with this setting. You can set the uh, declination for that given day, which you take from tables known as an ephemeris. Uh, the, uh, our circle is this circle right here. Uh, for example, 12 noon is right at this point, 1 o'clock is here, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and so on. 
and uh, the earliest that you can shoot in the morning is 8.30 in the morning. Uh, <clears throat> we have level bubbles here. Uh, you can see the, uh, that the plate itself must be uh, precisely level. And uh, so after you have made the, the setting for the latitude that you're in, the declination for that given day, uh, you're then ready to uh, adjust for the time. If you think about a sundial, if a sundial is properly oriented at noon of a given day, uh, the, uh, the indicator, which is called a gnomon, uh, is pointing due north. Now, uh, with the rotation of the Earth, uh, every 24 hours, uh, we have the Earth, the world, divided into 24 time zones. And if there's 360 degrees uh, around the Earth, every 15 degrees of longitude represents one hour. Uh, the zero is in Greenwich, England, and, uh, and then every uh, one of these 15 degree uh, markers of longitude then constitutes a one hour time zone. And uh, we here in the Upper Peninsula uh, are actually in the central time zone, uh, but we are on Eastern time uh, because of county option. And uh, so uh, the central time zone is based on the 90 degree uh, west longitude. And uh, so in figuring uh, our time then, uh, one degree of arc uh, is equal to four minutes of time. And then we can figure it out that uh, the sun actually gets here uh, in the vicinity of the Iron Museum uh, nine minutes and 40 seconds before it reaches the 90 degree west longitude, which is the unit for central time. Uh, so we also have uh, the equation of time. The Earth uh, the sun apparently wobbles like a, a lazy figure eight. And the uh, correction for today is uh, six minutes and 40 seconds, uh, which is a plus. So actually, uh, for where we are here in Nagani, uh, the, the sun for local apparent time is 16 minutes and 28 seconds uh, earlier than it will reach the 90 degrees. After determining the local apparent time, one rotates the solar compass so that the revolving limb on which the declination has been set points to the local apparent time on the hour circle. The solar compass is then rotated until the image of the sun fills the tic-tac-toe on the silver plate. The compass is now oriented so that the sighting arms are in a true north-south position. The operator now clamps the lower plate. The sighting arms on the upper plate may be rotated to read any angle that the operator wishes by noting the horizontal angle or azimuth of the sighting arms. And that then will tell us what true north is with the use of the solar compass. The preceding was a presentation of six productions.